will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. Yeah. His faithfulness yeah. will be your shield and your ramparts. Hallelujah. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies of day, nor the pestilence uh, that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys the day, midday. A thousand, um, a thousand may fall on, at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eye and see the punishment of the wicked.
asking the Spirit to break out. And I think it's just a simple question. Will you let Him fill you? Will you let the Spirit fill you? Will you lay all of that down and say, yes, come and fill me. I need you. Not only do I need you, I want you. I desire you. I have a hunger for you. I don't want anything else to stand in your place. It would be Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands 
this time of prayer, we're just going to continue with the flow of the Spirit. I will like for you, whoever would like to come, come to the altar. The altar is open. Spend time in prayer with God at the altar. If I can have some ministers to line up, pray with people right now. Hallelujah. God is doing something special today. We just want to be obedient to how he is maneuvering amongst us. I'd like for you guys to keep singing, keep playing, ministering, keep ministering, yes. God wants to do something in your heart. He wants to do breakthrough in you. This is a point of surrender.
Give the Lord a hand.
continue on. Father, thank you for your loving kindness, your wisdom, your understanding that you give us on how we should manage our finances and go forth in your kingdom. We thank you for missions that we support. We thank you for the homeless that we support. We thank you for the people within the, this ministry, within this congregation we support, and all the other things that we do to build your kingdom. We thank you for it all, God of God. And we ask that whatever is given in these baskets multiply for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. What can I get out of this? 
Where's my blessing? And we all like a good blessing. Now, who who don't like a blessing? Come on. But that is the gospel that is being preached. And so we've got this self-centered vantage point of Christianity that is all about us and it's not about Jesus. This self-centered gospel requires less of us and more for God. As if he hasn't already done it all. It has produced congregations of consumers rather than seekers. And so today we're going to talk about being a consumer versus a seeker. Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians. 
Christians than to die in the desert. All that crying out they did. They forgot all about that. Come on. Come on. And what did happen? God was like, man, welcome to the sea. <laughs> got these water walls, walk over this sea. And so they walk through the sea. They get over there, and then they can have drinkable water. God made bitter water drinkable. Then they were hungry. God gave them manna and quail. But they was complaining. And so what did they say? Exodus 16, 3 says, The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So, y'all had all the pots of meat. Y'all came back from being slaves for the day. Y'all was crying out to God and that meat didn't mean nothing. But now, I just want slave meats. Plentiful slave meats. Then, they were thirsty again. Because that's what happens in the desert. You get thirsty. And God brought water from the rock. But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then God helped them defeat the Amalekites. And then they get to the Mount Sinai experience where Moses goes up on the mountain. There's a cloud around that they can't go up on the mountain. And God is speaking to Moses so they can hear and they hear him speaking to Moses. They hear his voice. So this is all that has happened up to this point. For God to show himself faithful to these people. To show them that I'm with you. I've got you. Even through their complaining. I've got you. Right. Right. Let's go to Exodus 19. We're going to read verse 1 through 8. And then you can put a, a thumb in Exodus 32, 1 through 8. So Exodus 19. I guess I should get there too. It says this. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt. And how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together. We will do everything the Lord has said. Church, let's say it together. We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answers back to the Lord. We will do everything the Lord has said. Now, God has shown us his faithfulness time and time again. He's brought us, we can see miracles. It's not even like he's miracles. How often have we 
We've been screaming, hollering, crying. We need to get out. We need to change. We need something. Free us, Lord. Free us. And now he begins to show himself. And we're along for the journey and we're happy. And then we get to that, 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 that roadblock, that mountain. And it's like, God, where Where is your faith? How many times has God delivered us and we made that commitment? You got, you got me now, God. You got me through this one. I'm fully yours. Ain't no turning back. It's me and you to the day I die. So that's what the Israelites just did. Moses went back up to the mountain to have a conversation with God. Usually warranties are about 30 days. <laughs> Moses was up there 40. But the Israelites tried to return their commitment. Turn to 32. See, the Israelites were cool until they weren't. They were good until something started make didn't make sense anymore. Verse 32 says this, 40 days later, 40 days after they said, God, we are all yours. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what's happening.
When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf, and he thought, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, my people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented, presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up and indulged in revelry. That quick people. They had an all out part worship session to this cat. That they expected to lead them the rest of the way to where they didn't even know they were going. They didn't even know where they were going. See, Moses knew where they were going. Because God gave Moses the word, I'm taking you to a promised land. All they knew was we getting out of Egypt. I'm getting out of this immediate situation. But I don't understand where you're taking me, so I don't understand what it's going to take my investment, the investment I'm going to need to make to get there. Wow. Come on. How often is that? We got something going on. We just want God to take it away. Take it away. Take them away. Come on. This week, on. This week. Then the Lord said to Moses, God is holy. He can never be bogus. But I was like, oh, I mean, this is what parents do too. Go down because you're, this is verse 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people who you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. He said, your people? Right. <laughs> you ever have a uh, school call and you call your spot and say, your kids at school acting crazy? I don't know. That's your kid. God hit him with that. Uh, Moses, your people. And Moses, like me, I ain't walking with people. They're making people I pray for the Lord. I had a different version in mind. <laughs> they have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When you talk about the characteristics of a consumer, See, consumers don't see what God is doing. They only see what he's done. We've got a church that doesn't see what God is actually doing. There's no foresight. It is, oh, God just did this. And that is what I can speak of. Wow. Wow. Consumers want deliverance without the effort. You just want to be free. I don't want to pay a price. I don't want to have to go through the hard work. I don't want to have to deal with me. God, just take it away. You know, God was to just take stuff away from us. We can go back and get it. If God was just to take stuff away, we'd go back and get it because it's what our hearts desire. But if we start to do the work through the Holy Spirit, if we seek God, understand who He is, understand who we are, and we do that process, the taste for whatever it is we left goes away. See that taste doesn't go away just because you took it. Because 
we knew there was going to be some anguish and some pain and reliving some things that we did not want to relive to get to that freedom. Dealing with the words that have been spoken. Dealing with the failures that we've had. Our own idiosyncrasies. And it's like, man, I don't want to endure that. The, the consumer is benefit focused. We already talked about that. What's in it for me? The consumer can only receive as much as they're being fed, which produces limited understanding. And when we don't understand something, when we don't get a full understanding of it, it doesn't take root. It doesn't take root. And without root, a strong wind, a false doctrine, this good-looking girl that God ain't found nothing can blow real hard and we back. Consumers want instant gratification. Consumers looking for a truth, not the truth. We're looking for a truth that benefits what it is we desire. And we're not looking for the truth that will take us where he desires. So consumers, like the children of Israel, are like, now let's look at Paul. Turn to your Bible, Philippians chapter 3. And this, this is the secret. We're gonna, we're gonna, I, I would encourage you, you can write 1 through 14. I'm going to focus on 7 through 14. Um, I will touch on some of the earlier verses. But we're going to read 7 through 14 right now. At chapter 3, Philippians 3, 7 through 14. And it says, but whatever for gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through, um, that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained all of this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, Paul was a seeker. And I would submit Paul was a seeker even before he became a Christian. A disciple of Christ. An apostle. Before he wrote this word that God gave him to write. Verse 7. But whatever was my gain, I now consider loss. So let's talk about his gain. Paul was well known in the religious community. Right. He was what they call a Pharisee of Pharisees. He had a strong lineage as a Hebrew. He was faultless as it related to the law. 
which means everything the law I said, that everything the law said do, I did. Because I thought that was the way we were supposed to live. And so I even persecuted those that were going against this law that were talking about Christ in the church that didn't make sense. I persecuted them. And I persecuted them. I like Paul was that villain that had good intentions. Right? The, the villain that said, I, I'm trying to preserve what is sacred, what is right, what I deem to be holy. But I missed the mark. And so Christ revealed himself to Paul. Now, Paul was very much aware of this transformation and what it was going to do for him in that pharisaical community, in that religious community. Because now everything that I, I was against I'm standing for. Right. With the same boldness, with the same intentionality, with the same focus. So when he said, I, 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 whatever were gains to me, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. All of that position and status means nothing to me anymore. Seekers are not concerned about what they're losing. My God. They are focused on what they are gaining. Come on, amen. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. They're on a journey because they, they believe wholeheartedly. There's a hope that raises up inside them. There is something greater. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And that greater is what I'm searching for. That greater is what I'm seeking. That greater is why I'm giving my focus and intention to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm not just here worshiping because it's our congregated time to worship. The Israelites did that. If you look at the story, there were times where Moses would go to be with God and they would come out of their tents and they would worship. And they, they were worshiping the God of Moses. The God that delivered them, the God that they didn't understand. Right, right. But there were people like Joshua that when Moses would leave the tent, yeah, would stay there because he said, whatever this is that Moses has, I want it. I'm seeking to have it for me. I'm not trying to get it through Moses. I want it for me. And that was what Paul was. I want this for me. I want to understand who you are. And who am I in relationship to that? That's what secrets do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Christ is the focus. Verse 8. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing. Christ Jesus, my Lord, yeah. for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found um, in Christ. Paul found value in knowing Christ. Not his hand, but his heart. How does he think? Why does he do things the way that he does? And that's what seekers do. I want to understand. I want to know. I want to know your heart. You want to know how, how, how people change? Like how people really change? They get to know God. Christ. They get an understanding of how he views things. Amen. That is what changes man's heart. Yeah. But if I'm not taking the time to get that understanding, if I'm really not trying to know him, if I'm only going to want 
to know him up to the point that it's not going to cost me things that I don't want to give up. You know. And am I really trying to know him? You know, when you're seeking for a treasure, um, I've never sought for treasure. But I've seen some shit before. <laughs> but there's this intent focus. Um, I've never seen a treasure hunt movie or show where there was this perfect map that led you right where to go and then the treasure was just there. Never, not never. <laughs> Do you know how certain that series would be? We got it, let's go. No, it usually goes like this. It usually goes like, there's this rumor of a treasure. But we gotta find this map. And then you go on this journey just to find the map. And then you find all these battles and you couldn't be like, man, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it because this is what they're saying the treasure is. And you get the map. And then you realize, I can't read the map. Because it's either not a whole map, it's in a whole language that I ain't never ever, ever heard before. It's got drawings on it that I ain't never seen before. And so now you got to try to figure out what are the maps. And there's these clues. And so you got to figure out clues that tell you where to go. And of course, it's not just one clue. It's a clue that gets you to another clue. That gets you to another clue. That gets you to another clue. And then you're like, ah, this is it. This is it. And then that last clue that now tells you where you need to go is like the hardest part of the journey. You have already almost died ten times, but this is the hardest part of the journey. And you encounter all kinds of obstacles going to get this treasure. And you, you get right there. And then there's another obstacle. Before you get it. Amen. And that journey, the secret says it's worth it. Well, what's happening on this journey? I'm learning about me. I'm learning about perseverance, trials and tribulations. I'm getting a better understanding of why whoever created this map, why they did it the way they did it. What was going on in their mind? What was the backstory? What is this leading to? Why was this important? When we are seeking God, seeking to know Him, yes, sir. understand there will be trials and tribulations. Right. Understand there's going to be valleys. There's going to be mountaintops. Come on. Come on. Understand there's going to be learning. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, 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 the reward is really in the journey. The journey of learning who he is, learning how he loves, the journey that provides us purpose, yes, joy, peace, the journey that makes us overcomers. Yes, yes, Man, we don't want that though. First nine. Verse 9 says this. And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Paul wanted to be discovered in Christ. He said, I want to be found in him. Like, I, I, I spent some time on that because I'm like, when you think about that, how deep 
that is? I want to be found in him. I want my very being to be identified in who he is as my creator. So in order to be found, that means there's some losses that have to be taken. That means there's some things that I see, believe, about myself that I've got to be willing to encounter and, 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 and deal with. There are some falsities that have been spoken over my life that I've got to be willing to deal with. To be found in Christ. But you won't get that as a consumer. You gotta be a seeker. A seeker seeks to please Christ. So you know, Paul was he was from the law. So now he's talking about this relationship of, of faith in Christ. And how it's more than this set of rules. Right? Because we we've deduced Christianity to a set of rules. It's like no. It's bigger than this set of rules. It is, it is this person of Christ and the work that he did in suffering and dying and being raised from the dead that is now producing life for mankind. That is now giving me a purpose that is not self-centered. That is not focused on me. And so the suffering he was talking about was the suffering he was going to have to go through as he spread this gospel. See, God told him, hey, uh, Saul, you are going to be Paul, and you, your mission now is to preach this word to the Gentiles. So not only are you betraying the Pharisees, and all that teaching. But now I want you to go talk to people that they wouldn't even go talk to to tell them I'm here for them. Right. 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 You have to be a secret. I understand. Okay, God, what are you really saying? Like, what? What? Help me. Reveal to me. See, revelation comes from secrets. Yeah. Amen. We want God to reveal things to us, but. We just really want him to hand things to us. That's what we want. The God of the Lord. There's one our relationship than a bunch of rules. There's fulfillment, joy, purpose, hope, joy, freedom, peace, and love. Seekers operate by faith. And that's because they understand what does Hebrews 11, 6 say? And without faith it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of, of those who earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. So when people are going for this treasure, they believe that if I keep at it, if I keep going, if I stay committed to this thing, I'm going to get the reward. Yes, sir. And Paul did that same thing with Christ. Why do you think the word tells us to search for wisdom like it was treasure, like it was silver or gold? Because he knows we will be a fool for some silver and gold. He knows we'll do stuff we never, ever thought we would do before. To get the prize. And he says, I'm the prize. Right. 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 And that was what Paul identified. Christ is the prize. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we want to see people saved and delivered. That deliverance comes through knowledge, revelation, conviction, all of these things. It, it, is, it is more than just a worship service. See, the worship service is, is kind of like the, the calling out of Egypt. 
I'm hearing your cry. I'm letting you know that I'm here. I'm allowing you to feel my presence. Are you ready to take the journey? Are you ready to take the journey as a seeker? Or are you going to come in here Sunday after Sunday just looking for that feeling? Feelings don't change people. Feelings don't produce surgery on the heart. They don't transform people. Truth transforms people. Truth will be planted as well as uproot. How do we get truth? We've got to be seekers. Verse 10 says, I want to know Christ, yes, know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. You know what Paul was saying there? I don't want to know Christ through conversation with you. I don't want to know him educationally. I want to know him with the full experience of experiencing him. Because there's something about an experience that is a lot stronger than just information. You know there are consumers that read their Bible every day? They read the word every day because it's what they're supposed to do. And they read the word like it's a story. Oh, no, I just think it was. Seekers are saying, what are you saying? What are you saying? What is the life changing? What is the power in this word? Seekers are willing to put in the work. Let's go to verse 12. It says, not that I've already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. All that Paul had done, and he said, I'm not there yet. Because the closer I get to Christ, the more I understand there is more yeah. of him to be had. Yeah. There is more of me that still needs to die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've written a whole bunch of letters to churches. I've spoken a whole lot of words. But there is still more. But well, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind is training toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, seekers are willing to do the work. Yeah. There are a number of stories of Paul. I love, I think we, didn't we just have a, we were talking about the shipwreck a few weeks ago, a month or so ago. Um, and I thought about that story as I thought about seekers. There were people on that boat that all they knew was what Paul was telling them. But God had revealed to Paul what he was going to do. Seekers are understanding what's going to happen. Consumers just understand what has happened. Today, God is looking for a people that are seeking him so he can speak to you. He's looking for a people that can be the warning sign to others. He's looking for those that others can come to to gain understanding. 
He's looking for people that are saying, I'm in it. We will never raise the body of disciples as consumers. Because we're only looking for a gospel that benefits us. And that is not what being a disciple is about. Jesus was teaching them how to reach others. How to live in a way to reach others. And I believe that is what he's raising up today. I believe he's wanting to shake up the church today. He's wanting us to truly determine are we in this Are we truly in this? Not just in the position that you serve, but are we truly in this? Does our time with God represent that? Do our conversations represent that? Does our desire for growth and understanding represent that? Are we going to be like the Israelites? Or are we going to be a church full of Pauls? Are we going to be consumers of this good, rich word? Or are we going to be seekers of this great treasure? Bow your heads.
areas of your life have you been a consumer? This is a seeker. And I'm telling you this, guys, we, it, this is not a, a, a one-time decision, right? There, there are, are our phases where we're, we're seeking, we're seeking, and then we get comfortable and we get caught up in life and, and then we find ourselves consuming and, and, and we can waffle back and forth between these two. So this is not a message of, of, of condemnation, but more of a, let's examine ourselves. Where are we? Where do we have some traits of the consumer? Where do we need to be more like the seeker? And I want to ask you to stay in this morning. If your desire is to be a seeker, and if you want to make a commitment to say, God, I'm going to take some steps. I'm going to rearrange some things. I'm going to rearrange some things. I'm going to allow you to do the work that you want to do in me. I'm going to give you a, what I'll call as an ignorant yes. A yes that doesn't know exactly what's going to happen. But that is confident that you're at the end of it. A yes that knows confidently that I want to finish this race with a well done, my good and faithful servant. If that's you in here, stand to your feet and we are going to pray. We're going to pray. And before we pray, I want you to truly think about, and I would even ask you as you, you get home today, write down, how does this change my day? How does this maybe change my week? But put something down that you can start to just use as your roadmap. And it doesn't have to be a big elaborate thing. But let's be intentional. As seekers are intentional. Amen? Heavenly Father, you see your children. You see your children, Lord God, that are standing here saying yes. Yes, Lord God. We first ask you to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us of the areas where we've fallen short. Forgive us, Lord, where we've been like the Israelites, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God, where we've just wanted the, the blessings and have not been willing, Lord God, to truly put in the work. Have not been truly seeking your face, Lord God. Lord God, where we've, where we've wanted your hands, Lord God, but we haven't desired to seek your heart. May you change us, Father. As we commit, Lord God, to making changes, Lord, to going deeper with you, Father. As we commit to this, Father, I ask, Lord God, that in return, you will continue to show your faithfulness. You will continue to reveal your heart. You will continue to reveal yourself. Lord God, I pray that we be a transformed church. God, I pray that our prayer lives will increase. I pray that they not only increase, but they intensify, Father. I pray that our understanding of the word will become greater, Father. Lord God, I pray for a boldness. I pray there will be a greater boldness in us, Lord God. We need you, Lord. May we be dependent upon you, God. May we understand our dependence, Lord God. Just as Moses, Lord God, when you told him to go, and he said, if you don't come with me, I don't want to come. I'm not going unless you go with me, Lord God. May that be our hearts. Wherever we go, you be the driver. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I just want us to say the response, and then we'll close up.
First and foremost, Pastor Jason is out of town with Apostle Deborah and another team member. They have made it to Uganda. They are there ministering today. Amen. And so I ask that you continue to pray for them throughout the week. They are to return on Friday. And so just be praying throughout the week that God would have his way. And also pray for their strength in Jesus' name. Praise God. Uh, Pastor Brent, thank you so much for the word today. Would you just bless him? And even as he's uh, talked to us about being uh, seekers instead of consumers, we have an opportunity this week as God is calling us into our weekly fasting. This is the first full week of the month. Uh, this coming Monday through Friday, and we're going to be fasting, fasting for breakthrough and change. And so please, would you be a part of that fasting? Set aside time to seek the Lord's face this week. Um, maybe you want to turn down a couple of meals and only have one meal a day. Maybe you just want to do a juice fast. Whatever the case may be, we take the time to seek the Lord's face. This is all this week, and it'll culminate to Friday. Come back this Friday evening at 7 o'clock p.m., where it will be a time of worship and prayer. And so please come back um, for this Friday evening, and we will have a time of seeking and praying together. Amen. This next part, um, I want to first and foremost thank everyone for their condolences and notes. Uh, my father passed away last weekend. Um, he died from his heart stopping, um, and then he was suffering with cancer um, and suffering with a, a heart attack, which he miraculously covered from. But then the Lord God had taken him home uh, last week. And so thank you all so much. The funeral is going to be Saturday, uh, December 7th, out in Harvey, Illinois. And if you want more information about that, please check our Facebook page. And many of you have been asking, how can we help? How can we help? How can we help? And the best way to help is if you can give. If you can give, you can give to the church and just put for the Ratliff family. Um, whatever you give, $5, $10, $20, Whatever it might be, it will be very helpful to uh, helping with some of the other needs in the family. And so thank you for that. Um, next on our list, uh, we have the Rope Christmas Giving. Uh, Pastor Jason mentioned about this last week. And these are gift bags that are going to be uh, uh, given to the, uh, the men from the Rope Ministry. And so please make sure that you check out this flyer. It is on the back table. Um, you can bring stuff throughout the week. Just make sure you call ahead and you can drop off items and then they are being collected in the dove room. This is an awesome opportunity for the church to really partner with the ministry to these men. There are many men that are being touched by this ministry. You may not see them here in the room, but work is happening outside of the four walls. Amen. And so this is an opportunity to show love to those men. So please, you can drop off. If you don't have anything to drop off and some of the needs, uh, gently use clothing, boxer briefs, white t-shirts, sweatshirts, jeans, work pants. Um, special items would be Bibles in English and Spanish. Um, some of you might have new or used bikes that you want to give, backpacks, toiletries, toilet paper. This whole list is outside right here in the hallway, so please take one so that you can be a part of that giving. Amen. Next thing, just be Christmas party. Amen. Next Sunday, December 8th, uh, the women of the Just Be Ministry and all women are invited in this place to come and be a part of the Christmas party that is happening immediately following the service. Amen? Hey, here, come on. Yeah, I'll let you tell them. Praise the Lord. It's just very quick. Right after service next week, we want to invite everyone 18 and older to come and have time with us. We're going to have lunch. We're going to have games. We want you to bring a white elephant gift. We want you to bring, we're going to have a fun game with everybody going to bring toilet paper. We would like you to bring a real, like, re-gift, white elephant gift. And um, we are also going to have a time to give. So if you have extra change or you want to bring cash or you just be prepared because we're going to have an opportunity also for you to give to um, someone that we love and that is in need. We're not going to talk about that today, but we want you to be prepared for that right after service next Sunday. Much. Praise God. And another opportunity of fellowship is for the Legacy Ministry. Praise the Lord. For those that are in Legacy, 55 and older. Amen. 
Praise God. So they wanted to make sure that I made it known that there will be a Christmas party on Saturday, December 14th from 9 a.m. to 11. Um, I heard y'all had a great time last month at the restaurant. Praise the Lord. And y'all ended up praying for people outside at the restaurant. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Look, I'm only like three more years. I'll be there in a second. Praise the Lord. But um, just, yeah, the Christmas party for Legacy Ministry will be happening on Saturday the 14th. That is from 9 to 11. Amen. I will, and that will be here in this space. Amen. Here in this space. Praise God. So that is it for today. Why don't we all stand to our feet? Um, also, let's thank this worship team. I was counting like 50, maybe 50 people in the room, maybe a little bit more. Okay, there's about 50 plus people that were youth and young adults that were here last night, and they were just crying out before the Lord God. I stepped into the environment, I was like, ooh, and it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful time, and so continue to pray for our young people, continue to pray for the fire of our young adults, that God is doing something. Touch your neighbor and say, he's doing something. And if you didn't touch a neighbor, I want you to do it again. Hey, he is doing something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we give glory to God. Would you lift your hands before the Lord? Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord God, that you have stirred our hearts to be seekers and not consumers. And so, Father, even as we get into the fasting this week, Lord God, I pray for a sweet communion with you. Father, I pray that we would wrestle with you, Lord God. I pray that we would seek after you because we recognize your value is so much greater. And now may the grace of God go before us. May the spirit of the Lord go before us. May his sweet peace rest upon us in the mighty name of Jesus as we leave this place. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Greet one another in the name of Jesus.